On November 24, 2013, Vic Ramos passed from this world to be with his Lord in the church triumphant. Vic and his beloved wife Connie are reunited. With his passing, Main Street Living lost one of our key people. Instrumental in the formation of Main Street Living, he joined the Board of Directors in 2001 as a founding member. Vic was a current member of the Board of Directors. As a constant participant in the production, he served in every phase of the program, for the past 12 years serving as the Director of Communications. We will miss his counsel, wisdom, and leadership. We ask that you keep the Ramos family and Vic's Main Street Living family in your prayers as we move forward together without Vic's gentle yet influential guidance. Welcome to Main Street Living. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod invites you to join us in worshiping our Lord. Reverend Greg Lair brings us today's message, A Servant of the One True King. Reverend Lair will lead us in worship after our opening hymn. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for this second Sunday after Epiphany is from Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 to 7. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my birth, he has made my mention of my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. But I said, I have labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel to himself, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers, kings you will see you and rise up, princes will see and bow down, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sothenus, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, and called to be holy together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of His grace given to you in Christ Jesus. For in Him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because your testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, chapter 1, verses 29 to 41. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then Jesus gave his testim- or John gave his testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and testify that this is the Son of God. The next day John was there again with two of his disciples. Then he saw Jesus passing by. He said, Look, the Lamb of God. And when the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. 
Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What do you want to be when you grow up? It's exciting to ponder that when you are young because there's so many possibilities. Maybe it's a doctor that you want to be, a teacher, an athlete, maybe a pastor, a pipe fitter, an entrepreneur, maybe it's the president. Let me ask you this what if you could do anything you wanted? You know, you have the pick of jobs. What if you could be the boss? What would you want to be? What if someone could be the boss and yet would say, I want to do the dirtiest, the hardest, the lowliest work there is? Well, some people might call them foolish. Maybe they'd call them naive or they have lack of ambition. Or maybe they suffer from low self-esteem. 
Some might even call him a loser. But you know what? We call him Savior. Jesus didn't have to come here to earth. And when he did come, he could have done anything he wanted. What he wanted was to serve. He was glad to be a servant, and that fills you today with indescribable joy. The position of a servant, if you think about it, is completely under the control and the direction of the master. You are expected to do whatever he says whenever he gives the order. A compensation package isn't mutually agreed upon. You receive whatever the master decides to give you. There's no personal prestige, and any credit or glory, it goes to the master. So the question that comes to mind then is, who would willingly do that work? Jesus. Jesus did. He said through the prophet Isaiah chapter 49, The Lord has called me from the womb. He said to me, You are my servant in whom I will be glorified. There's no hint of resentment in Jesus' words. He was glad to become human and serve because of his close relationship with the Father who sent him. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as the three persons of the Godhead, work in perfect love and harmony with one another. If we remember at Jesus' birth, or at Jesus' baptism, the Spirit descended like a dove, while the Father pronounced from Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. In love for the Father, Jesus was glad to serve. Do you see service to the Lord in the same light? Or does it seem more like a, a burden to you? When the Lord places a task before you, do you sigh and think, I already have too many people telling me what to do without God giving me orders too? Do you envy those who seem to go their own way without being concerned with living for the Lord? Do their lives seem happier? If serving the Lord feels like forced slavery, look to Jesus. Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of your faith, He gladly served in love for the Father. He's the Father's only begotten Son. And then remember that through His service, you have been adopted into God's family too. God has wrapped you in His loving arms, and now, as His child, you can have no greater joy in life than serving Him who first loved you. But to do a job well... A servant needs the right tools and a servant needs the right equipment. Jesus, he was glad to serve because he was equipped with all that he needed. As described from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 2, He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he has hidden me and made me a polished arrow. Jesus was given the word which is so powerful it pierces like an arrow. Listen from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Jesus' call to confess sin, repent, and turn to Him for forgiveness cuts and separates all people into two groups. Those who hear and believe and those who reject Him. For those who believe the Word is the power of God unto salvation, but for those who reject Jesus, they are condemned by the Word. Nothing is more powerful. The Word is the equipment that God gives you with which to serve Him. Are you glad to serve? Or do you make excuses? Do you sound like Moses who told God from Exodus chapter 4, I can't serve because I don't speak well and no one will believe me. Do we tell the Lord, I have so many other things to do. I can't possibly volunteer for any service to the advancement of the gospel. Dear friends, when we don't feel joy in serving, it's time to look to Jesus. After one especially long day, Jesus wanted to get away. Jesus wanted to relax with his disciples. Something else happened instead. And Mark tells us in his gospel from Mark chapter 6, verse 34, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, and he began to teach them many things. Love for the Father and the message he had been sent to deliver gave Jesus the strength, gave Jesus the desire to keep serving. It was that same servant attitude in our parents, 
teachers and pastors, which caused them to work so hard in bringing you the gospel news. And as Main Street Living Today remembers and dedicates this broadcast to our dear friend and now sainted Vic Ramus, it was the same servant attitude, love for the Father and the message he had been sent to deliver, which caused Vic to work so hard in bringing you and me and so, so many the gospel good news of Jesus Christ. Vic worked diligently for Main Street Living, behind the scenes, with indescribable joy. Vic worked diligently in so many ways and in so many avenues, delivering the life-giving word of Jesus Christ into people's lives. A servant's work isn't glamorous. It often looks ordinary and unimportant. Jesus' life of servants, service likewise, involved rolling up his sleeves, if you will, working hard with little recognition in every day ordinary circumstances. He breathed the same air, walked the same dusty roads, and ate the same plain food as everyone else. In fact, he was under the same requirements of God's law as everyone else. What was exceptional, though, was that he was the perfect Israel. He was the model servant, unlike the nation of Israel. He obeyed the law as Israel's substitute so that his people could receive his righteousness Now imagine working faithfully only to have the master come and say, you're not doing enough. I'm going to double your load. What would you say? What would you say? Jesus' answer was a joyful yes. God told him from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles, so that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. God gave Jesus the absolute, hardest, dirtiest work of all, not just to pay for the sins of the Jews, but to take on the guilt of all humankind, of all time, your guilt and and my guilt. It was grueling. Remember, Jesus endured 40 days of temptation in the wilderness. He was in agony in Gethsemane as he felt the burden of sin getting heavier and his death drawing closer. Finally, he called out from the cross from Mark chapter 15, verse 34, when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yet he never flinched in his determination. Jesus was glad to serve. Listen from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, who for the joy set before him, before Jesus, endured the cross, scorning its shame. Have you ever wondered whether your serving was worth it? Maybe you spent the entire day scrubbing bathrooms, washing grudgy clothes, putting away accumulated clutter, clearing a counter full of dirty dishes, and then the rest of the family arrives home and within an hour, everything is back the way it was before. Dear friends, Jesus knew that kind of frustration too. From Isaiah chapter 49, verse 4, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing. It's the common experience of the Lord's servants. Elijah faithfully preached the word and it seemed like nothing was happening. Christian parents have been overwhelmed with a deep sense of despair, fearful that all their efforts in bringing a child to the Lord were in vain when they saw their child straying from faith that they had been taught. Maybe it's an expensive and intensive mission effort. It fails to produce a a single prospect. Hard, dedicated labor for the advancement of the good news isn't noticed. It doesn't seem to make a difference. What's the use? Isn't it just a waste of effort? Most of us have felt that way at times, and, and we probably will feel that way again. But then look at Jesus He had the same feeling, but instead of giving up in despair, he was glad to continue serving because he counted on the Father's strength to bring about the results. Listen from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 4. Surely my just reward is with the Lord, and my work with my God. Don't underestimate God's power. It always works in spite of appearances. At the cross, it looked as though Jesus had been defeated. Apparently, in the minds of many, something had gone horribly wrong. But by His death, Jesus conquered death, conquered the devil, and gave you the victory. The Word works. As long as we are using it, we have nothing to worry about. 
We don't always see the results, but they will come as God wills them. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, I planted, Apollos watered, and God made it grow. He encouraged the Corinthians from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my dear sisters and brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You see, whether it's teaching Bible study like Vic loved to do, maybe it's talking to a neighbor, instructing our children, praying for ministries, or distributing church information door to door, may you gladly serve, knowing God's strength will give success. What do you want to be when you grow up? It's not just a question for the young people. As the Spirit causes each of us to grow in faith by His Word and sacrament, may we confidently say, just like Main Street Living's dear sainted friend Vic Ramos would say, I want to be a servant of the one true King, Jesus Christ, who served and saved me. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We're happy that you joined us for worship today. Reverend Lair is the pastor of Zion Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Traditional worship is held at 8 a.m., contemporary worship is held at 10.30 a.m., and education for all ages is held at 9.15 a.m. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information on an LCMS church in your town, please contact the district office at 3501 Gateway Boulevard, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57106, or log on to www.lcms.org. If this program has been a blessing to you, please send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. We appreciate your prayers and support of this ministry. Through your continued support, we can spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Main Street Living is a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod and is supported by member churches and viewers like you.
created and produced by many people interested in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ.